going to repeat the texture that's up here. Um, but I think this is this looks beautiful. I can't wait. I keep trying to see how it will look on my neck. So first we're going to start by dressing the loom with um, two warp strings. So here this is going to be these two yards are going to be considered for one row. Um, just so that I can have a nice balanced texture between them. And then I'm going to add in the shed stick. Um, so by using the shed stick and some string, um, string leashes are going to help me organize this because using these two different yarns together, it's the, the mohair that I'm using is quite sticky. Um, that way that when I'm pulling them apart with using the string heddle and the shed stick, it helps organize them a lot better and it's a lot easier to weave um, each the alternating rows. So after weaving one row of plain weave, I'm going to make a row of twining with it. This is just to make sure that the weft yarns are all secured in place for that first row. And as you can see, I'm leaving some space between the nails and the first column. And I'm going to weave about one inch or one inch and a half of plain weave here just to secure as a base. And then I can start building the texture. So here I'm using um, three different types of yarns to create this texture. Um, I'm doing this by creating this looping um, pile weave. It's a continuous um, rows of, um, or continuous um, amounts of loops here. So here what I'm doing is I secure the yarn to two warp yarns, and then taking the next two yarns, I wrap the weft yarn around it. And I'm just using my index finger or middle finger to use as a base. You could also use some um, sticks, some knitting needles or something like this. Um, and I'm just going to continue this until I don't have any more space on my finger or on a brush uh, or um, a stick that you might have. And yeah, we're just going to continue this until the end. Now, once you get to the end of your weft yarns, you're just going to knot the yarn around and put the ends to the back and just secure it and make sure they stay in place. Um, and then after we're going to secure it with some weft. Now on the next part, when I'm adding more yarn, more weft to this, I'm gonna start at the opposite end just to make sure the yarns are secured. And I'm gonna continue the pattern just as we did with the first time um, and just take it, but moving towards the left and just wrapping the yarns around and using that middle finger again to secure the yarns in place. Okay, and as you continue to progress, I just, I move from the outside to the inside. So then from there, whatever, whatever direction you choose for the inside, it doesn't really matter too much, um, just as long as you're securing the yarn ends. Once you've made one row of the knots, then you want to make sure that you secure it with some rows of weft. And here in the next section, I'm going to work on another texture using two different types of yarn. So I'm using this, um, thinner uh, wool yarn and this metallic yarn. Now the thing to keep in mind when you're using two different materials is that, as you can see here, um, the yarns are kind of getting entangled a bit, so you just want to keep an eye out for that and keeping them nice and organized. But I'm using the same exact technique um, just to build up that texture. So. After we've gotten the rows of texture that you want, um, I've secured the yarns always with about five rows of um, weft. And then now, as you can see here, I'm going to go back to the mohair and add a few rows of the mohair that I used. It's the same one that I used for creating the warp. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I've used two, two strands of it so that it makes it a little bit thicker. Um, but it is take, it does take quite a few rows between um, to create one inch, right? The thinner the yarn is, the more rows you're going to have to make um, to create an inch of the yarn. Um, again, securing the yarns and just I'm just going to keep building the colors um, here all together. Okay, so I wanted to kind of show some progress on the scarf that I'm weaving. Uh, so as you can see here, it has a lot of texture and I'm using um, some loops. And um, yeah, I really, really like it a lot. And I know it's all gray, um, but I'm trying to use lots of different details as I've said before. And um, 
Yeah, I really love this. So it's going to be a short, not a choker scarf. I don't know what these are called exactly, but it's going to be just around the neck and there won't be much extra coming down. So I kind of wanted to just make, um, make a scarf that is just from the top to the bottom of the loom. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about this uh, pattern and this texture. So, um, but yeah, I have about maybe half to go with just kind of open, maybe plain weave here. Um, as you can see in the tutorial, I'm using um, different colors. And um, yeah, so once I get towards the bottom half, I'm just going to repeat the texture that's up here. Um, but I think this is this looks beautiful. I can't wait. I keep trying to see how it will look on my neck. Um, but I think it's gonna be quite large, quite quite wide. I don't know. Let's see for the neck. But it, I think it's gonna look pretty. I think so. We will see. But I like that that you can use simple te texture techniques such as these loops um, to create something that you can can wear as well. As for the back, it looks quite rough because <laughs> I've had to, to start and restart the knots uh, for the loops, but I'm gonna clean this up and I think I'm going to go to the market and maybe get um, some type of uh, um, fleece, um, yeah, fleece panel, and then I will sew it along here, along the, um, the edge for the back, but I will probably clean this up maybe use some type of um, fabric glue to just make sure that these loops are secured in so that when I wash this that it's not going to come apart. So yeah, we'll see. This is my first time creating a scarf on the frame loom and um, I've crocheted lots of scarves before but um, yeah, I don't think I've ever woven, woven a scarf but I'm really excited. It looks really great and I guess we'll see what happens. Choo -choo -choo. But, um, oh yeah, but the other thing with this is that um, my plan is to make an invisible um, collar, maybe we call it a collar maybe, but my idea is that when you put on the scarf, um, there will be a way to kind of easily take it off and put it on. And so it was something, it could just go over the head and then just keep your neck warm, or have something that I can just fasten it easily. But I'm thinking like some little snaps and then you can easily undo it. But then again, I don't want, I wanna make sure that I keep that, um, those areas um, really secure. I don't want it to like pull it apart or anything like this. So um, yeah, I have to kind of explore a way to um, fasten either some type of button or some snaps um, to take it on and off, or maybe if I just decide I just want it to go over the head and wear it like this, then there's that option as well. But I hope, I think it is going to be a bit big, but maybe I can like fold it over a little bit and we'll see, or maybe it'll shrink a little bit once it's been washed, so. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna get back to weaving uh, the scarf. I'm hoping to finish it today. I really enjoyed making this piece um, because, I, yeah, as I mentioned before, I never um, wove, a, wove a scarf on a frame loom and it's really exciting to see like the progress that you can make with it. But it is a bit challenging because, you know, using the shed stick and the, um, uh, the string leashes, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, especially when you take so long to do it and you can use... Um, a table loom or a floor loom for it, which you know would be a lot easier. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, there's challenges to it. But I think this would be a really great project for anyone who is just starting to weave, um, because if you are trying to learn the fundamentals of weaving, then starting off with a small project such as weaving a scarf, this allows you to understand the function of the looms and the parts, the moving parts of it. When you yourself kind of become the loom, you, you are managing, um, you know, opening and closing the sheds and using different, um, like the string heddle to help you as well. This kind of gives you a really basic understanding that's the, you know, the fundamentals of, of weaving with a loom. So um, especially before you kind of invest in a, a bigger loom perhaps, or um, uh, yeah, a floor loom or a tapestry loom, this could be a very good way to understand um, the basics. 
So here is the update of how it's looking so far. It's taken some time hand weaving this, but it's looking so, so great. Okay, so I've removed the shed stick that was in here before. It's just that strip of cardboard. Um, and I opted to just go ahead and make a heddle, string heddle, a second set um, with the leashes here. So, um, so if there's any confusion, so this is every other one and these pick up the other ones that are the other that's picked up. So as you can see here, when I lift up this set, these these yarns are lifted, but when I lift up this set, the other set are pulled through. So it's just doing the same work as the um, the shed stick, so it's perfect. It's not coming along right. Um, yeah, and again, I'm doing this because it's just, I'm running out of space and um, putting in that shed stick, it just took up too much space, so um, it is this way, it's better. And I also try to use, you know, two different colors just so I don't get confused so that if they, you know, of course, because they're all in one line, it's kind of hard to get confused, but it's just kind of mentally to categorize this is one set and this is a second set, so. So here towards the end, you just want to really make sure that you have um, the weft yarns really secured. So although I'm using these two uh, string heddles, um, I keep rotating the loom around every few rows just to make sure that I can beat the yarns down enough so that they really secure those weft yarns and those loops in. Um, and once I've got to the end, I've wove about one inch and a half or so um, of weft here. And I'm just going to weave one row of plain weave and t use the twining method just to make sure that I secure the, um, this edge here. You can also use the hem stitch just to make sure the yarns are in place. And once those are nicely beaten in place, I'm going to remove the string heddle. Um, just make sure you carefully cut them out and don't cut any of your warp yarns. And then you'll be able to start removing your warp yarns from the loom. Now to remove the warp yarns from the loom, I like to go from the center outward. This is to make sure that you, you keep your attention and the yarn stay uh, in place well. You could start left to right, but I think it's better to start from the center and outwards. Um, so here you can simply cut the yarn. So here I have bundles of about four ends um, in each section. So I'm gonna just take every two bundles and then I'm gonna tie it, just a simple end or a simple knot because I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with the ends here. Um, and so I'm just doing a simple a standard knot here. Um, and because there's that row of twining, I'm not worried really that the yarns are gonna come undone. So um, yeah, so once I get finished with this, then I'll do the same thing to the other side. And if this will, once I finish this side here, um, the, the, the weaving will be released from the, um, from the, uh, from the loom. So you want to be careful so it doesn't drop or fall off. Um, and yeah, just continue doing this. Now the weaving is off of the loom. Oh, the beautiful scarf. Yeah, so um, there are lots of things that I really like about this and there's also things that I think next time I can do to improve it. Um, I'm really happy about the design of this and I really love the color palette. And I really, I'm really happy that the width seems to be quite consistent throughout the whole piece. Um, the, the, one of the things that stands out to me the most is that I think the fluffy loops um, one, some are bigger than the others on one side. Um, and on the back here, it looks like there will be quite a bit of work um, to send the ends in and probably using a little bit of textile glue just to make sure that those loops stay in place, especially if I'm going to be planning on wearing this and um, washing it or so. Um, but overall, I think um, the piece is held up really well. And um, it's, it moves really nicely too, it's really soft, it feels warm, and um, I'm really happy about the results. Once you've decided on the final design for the scarf that you've created, um, think about the edges. Um, do you want to send the ends in? Do you want to add buttons on the inside? Do you want to just add another knot to the end? 
um, think about what you want to do to finish off the piece. Um, and here I still have to figure out what I'm going to do with the ends. I'm going to try on the scarf and see how it fits and everything. And hopefully it comes out the way I like. Oh, <laughs> well, okay. So the scarf did turn out to be a bit too wide for me. And I think I'm going to have to go back and either um, try it out a different way. So as you can see here, when it's up like this, it's, it's quite hard, but it's, I think what I'm going to do is actually create, um, some extension pieces to this. So maybe create two longer pieces that, um, drop down. Or I really like here, this idea of, um, folding these over to four inch panels like this. And it could be like a small muffler or choker or neck warmer. Um, so I thought that was actually a cute idea like this, and it's really fluffy and textured. Or doing something a bit off the sh shoulder again, which I think would be really great if I extend it. So these two over the shoulder ideas would be nice. Um, you could attach it to like a sweater or something maybe, um, but I think maybe just so uh, weaving two more pieces and then attaching it later, which I think I'll do, and maybe I'll just add it onto another part of the video. Um, same thing like this. So this was like an interesting um, neckline, maybe. Um, again, uh, adding, I think, a bit more strips of um, yarn at the end, some woven pieces that would finish this off, I think would be a really great idea. Um, and it would be a little bit more versatile as this piece. But I think right now, as it stands, just using this piece as a neck warmer is... Uh, it's, I don't think it's going to work for me. And um, I think I have to make sure the next pattern, next design is going to be a little bit um, uh, not so wide. And um, But other than that, I think that this was really successful. And I can't wait to experiment some more on the loom with this piece. Well, I hope that this video was helpful for anyone who is trying to make a scarf on a frame loom. And um, as I mentioned before, it was the first time for me. And um, here is a little bit of um, the behind the scenes for me and when I'm designing or thinking about, um, when I was thinking about creating this scarf and um, here I'm kind of exploring different colors and different pattern ideas. And in this part here, I'm looking at how to fasten the, the scarf all together and um, so yeah, let me know if this is helpful for you at all. Um, but I thought I would just add this in here to kind of show um, what I'm doing before I'm designing. And that it, for me, it's it's more than the process of just putting the warp and the weft yarns on the loom. It's really thinking about um, the the location and placement of the of the yarns and the color palettes that I, that I want to use and maybe the texture the texture and the ideas behind um, the piece. So I like to think about those things and have different options while I'm um, before I actually put the yarn onto the loom. But I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and I hope to have a second part to this to show or maybe an update on one of my social media platforms to show you the update of what the loom or what this um, scarf looks like in the final um, in its final state. Um, but thank you so much for watching as always, and I hope to have a tutorial on the on the fibers and design um, blog soon um, that can give you some more ideas for weaving a scarf. And um, thank you again so very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time, and happy weaving. Bye!